Randy Savage made a list of demands before he'd returned to TNA. Among Great. the demands are that he is to, to taken to and from the shows in a limousine, which I guess is why they have 15 limousines at every episode of Impact now. Like, well, we might as well use them. That Brian Adams can be at the shows as his bodyguard, paid, by the way. Also, Ron Harris, apparently, that he has two paid security at all shows. That he have a private dressing room with a lock on the door. And that Jimmy Hart doesn't come anywhere near him in the backstage area because of his relationship with Hulk Hogan. Savage is so paranoid of Hart that he insisted that Hart not be allowed in the gorilla position or the production truck during his matches. Apparently Savage is concerned that Hart would attempt to sabotage him from a production standpoint in some manner. Garrett, I have a question. Go for it. Is Jimmy Hart there? (laughs) Yeah, he's like a backstage guy. He's not there every week these days, but he does pop up every so often helping out backstage and whipping up fans at Universal. I love the idea... Like, Jimmy Hart's not even a part of the company. <laughs> and Randy Savage is like, you keep Jimmy Hart away from me. And they're like, Randy, we don't... Like, Jimmy's, like, barely here. And like, no, you keep him away. It's like, oh, we fired him for you, Randy. It's like he wasn't here in the first place. But we fired him for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we kicked him out on the way out just for you, man. Apparently, Savage has not taken off his jacket in front of anybody, which has led to rumors and speculation that he isn't as muscular as he used to be. Uh, which you can see on the pay-per-view. He, like, he's not in terrible shape, but apparently like he had uh, extreme body issues Like it brought on by Vince McMahon just being like, be big, be big. Time to cycle back on. Because like, you watch him when he does take the jacket off on the pay-per-view and come out, he, he's, he's not Randy Savage anymore. I mean, yeah, but like, do you really expect him to be? Mm. I think that's kind of an unrealistic expectation at this point. But, but perhaps it isn't if you're booking him and promoting him as such. Yeah, when you're bringing him in as the the, the top guy, your top challenger for the world champion Jeff Jarrett main eventing pay-per-views, you, you do need him to be at least some degree of Randy Savage still. Yeah. Apparently he was uh, less on guard and more like joking about wrestlers more later in the month when he showed up. It's like, Hogan's not here, Jimmy Hart's not here, he, we're good. He's calmed down. And the final news though, Billy Gunn is expected to sign a TNA contract once his 90-day no-compete clause expires. Thank God, Kip James. There has been talk of having him feud or team with BG James. Did you know that the BG and BG James stands for Billy Gunn? Whoa, that's long-term storytelling. Hmm, I mean, I'm way more into into Bill Gunn than I am Road Dog. I was going to say, it would be interesting to, like, go to the alternate reality where Billy Gunn isn't, like, a television star in AEW at the acclaimed right now to get, like, yeah. that Liam's reaction to news that Billy Gunn is coming in. I think it would be a lot less positive. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't fault the man for having a, a good back end to his career. Yeah, for becoming a star all over again. Like, I was never, like, a giant Billy Gunn fan. I think I always, like, appreciated him, but... It is astonishing that he's, like, managed to be part of, like, a billion hot acts. <laughs> yeah, and especially this TNA one coming up. Oh, the James Hickenbottom! <laughs> oh, I hope they'll really demand to hand over that tape, too. They should, they should, and then TNA should do it. <laughs> Just to save us all from it. At the Alamo! 